welcome back to my channel and if you are visiting this space for the first time you are also highly welcome in this lecture we'll be looking at the importance of the pelvic floor let's use this image by the side here for illustration this is the configuration of the pelvic cavity and at the inferior limit here is where we have the pelvic floor this lecture will be looking at five importance of the pelvic floor so ride on with me as we unfold this first function of the pelvic floor is that it helps to provide structural support for abdominal pelvic viscera and this is where it helps to keep them in place and also in position keeping them in place will help prevent the prolapse of these organs which means that it will prevent these organs from sagging and also pushing them out of position. So if you look at the configuration of the pelvic cavity here, at the inferior part that is highlighted here in black is where we have the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor can also be referred to as the pelvic diaphragm. And at this point, it is seen to bound the pelvic cavity inferiorly, thereby helping to hold the pelvic viscerals in place. If you drive in into the pelvic cavity, you see that we have a number of organs. If you look at the front here, we have the urinary bladder that is harrowed here in yellow. And posterior to the urinary bladder, you have the uterus. And posterior to the uterus, you have the rectum. The rectum, of course, will become continuous inferiorly as the anal canal, which finally will terminate as the anus. And this is specifically for the female pelvis. In the male pelvis, it is a different ball game. We know that the males are not seen to have the uterus. So after the urinary bladder, the next structure that will be seen is the rectum. So you can see that within the pelvic cavity, we have a number of organs. It also helps to stabilize these organs against gravity. We know that the force of gravity will tend to push the organs down where the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm will be seen to act against gravity, thereby helping to structurally hold these organs in place. So one of the functions or importance of the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm will be to provide structural support for abdominal pelvic viscera. Then the next importance is pinteric control. And this means that they're able to provide voluntary control over the sphincters that are created around the pelvic floor. If you look at this image here by the side, this region that is carved out in dotted yellow is the pelvic floor. And if you look at this, you will see that it is made up of a number of muscles. And if you see the fibers of this muscle, you see that they have specific pattern by which they run. So for the external anal sphincter, this is where we have the external anal sphincter here carved out in red. And if you look at the fibers of the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm, you see that they run around the circumference of the external anal sphincter. And as they do this, they are helping to guide and also control the opening and the closing of the sphincter. And this is the fiber here, harrowed in white. If you look at it, you see that they are seen to run around the circumference of the external anal sphincter. Why, if you go more anteriorly, you have the external erectile sphincter. And this is what is seen to also be carved out in red. Also, around the external erectile sphincter, you also see fibers of the pelvic floor also running around the circumference of this sphincter. And as these fibers are seen to run around the circumference of these sphincters, they are helping to control their contraction and also their relaxation. And at the end, they help to prevent fecal and also the urinary incontinence, which is the prevention of the loss of control of the external anal sphincter and also the external urethral sphincter. And this will prevent the leaking of physics and also the urine. So this is the second importance that the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm is seen to exhibit. Considering the pattern by which the fibers run, encycling or running along the circumference of these two sphincters. Because as they do this and they contract, they are also going to be impacting the effect of contraction against the sphincter. And if they do otherwise by relaxing, they are also going to be exerting the effect of relaxation on the sphincter. So in that way, they are helping in the voluntary control of both the external anal sphincter and also the external erectile sphincter.
The next importance of the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm is sexual function. So let's see how they contribute to this function. And this function is exhibited in both the female and also in the male. So in the female, it allows easy penetration during intercourse. If you look at this configuration here, this is where we have the pelvic cavity. And at the inferior limit that is highlighted here in black is where we have the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm. So we have strands of fibers emerging from the pelvic floor and you see it inserted on the wall of the vagina canal. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. You have fibers emerging from the pelvic floor and you see it inserted on the wall of the vagina canal. And these grades of fibers are referred to as the pubo vaginalis. So this pubo vaginalis is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. When there's relaxation of the pelvic wall, there is going to be a simultaneous relaxation of the pubo vaginalis, which is this structure here that is highlighted here in yellow. And if this occurs, it's going to lead to the expansion of the vagina canal. And this will allow for easy penetration during sexual intercourse. So this is how the pelvic floor is able to contribute to this process. It also helps to provide high quality orgasm. And this is exerted as a result of the contraction of the pelvic wall or the pelvic diaphragm. During climax or at the point of climax, the contraction of the pelvic floor will stimulate an intense sensational mood during this process so that the quality of orgasm will be high. And finally, in female, it is seen to enhance birth process. Remember our pubo vaginalis that is highlighted here in yellow. Remember that these are fibers that emerge from the pelvic floor. And as they emerge from the pelvic floor, they are seen to be inserted on the wall of the vagina canal. And because of this, during birth process, the relaxation of the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm, we also lead to a simultaneous relaxation of the pubo vaginalis. And as this occur, there's going to be the expansion of the wall of the vagina canal so that the baby can easily pass through. And this is how it contributes to this effect. Now going to the male. In male, it is a different scenario considering the peculiarity of the reproductive system. For the male, it has to sustain erection. We know that erection is the hardening of the penis. And this is the penis here, highlighted here in white. We know that erection basically occur as a result of inflow of blood into the sinusoids that are created within the erectile tissue. The penis is made up of erectile tissue, which has spaces within it. And during erection, blood is seen to be filled up within these spaces. And this is what leads to the hardening. Upon this process, the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm will exert pressure on the wall of the vessels so that blood will be prevented from flowing back words into the body. The blood will then be retained within the sinusoids of the erectile tissue. And this is what is used to sustain erection. So you can see how the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm is helping to sustain erection through the process of applying pressure on the vessels that allows for the passage of blood into the sinusoids. And this is how it contributes to sustaining erection. It's also seen to enhance ejaculation. So in trying to explain this, let's look at this structure here located in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity, and this is the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder at the exit point of this structure is where we have the prostate gland, and this is what is seen to be highlighted here in blue. This prostate gland also contributes its secrets into the ejaculate. Along the prostate gland, we have the prostatic urethra. So going back to the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm that we say is highlighted here in black, we also have another grade of fibers emerging from the pelvic floor. And you see it inserted on the fascia covering the prostate gland. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in red. Remember when we described the pubo vaginalis that is highlighted here in yellow in female that is seen to emerge from the pelvic floor or the pelvic diaphragm. And finally, inserting on the wall of the vagina canal. We also have this pattern of emergence also in male. And this is referred to as the levator prostate. 
And this is what it seemed to be highlighted here in red. So you see these fibers emerging from the pelvic floor and the fibers are finally inserted on the fascia covering the prostate gland. And this is what is highlighted here in this image. So during the process of ejaculation, we know that ejaculation is the process of the release of semen part of the body. Of course, as the ejaculatory dot is bringing the semen from the male ductile system, it releases its content into the prostatic urethra. We also say that the prostate also needs to release its own secrets into the ejaculate because it has its own specific role in that regard. And because of this, there is going to be the need for the contraction of the prostate gland. So during the process of ejaculation, the contraction of the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm, will also lead to a concurrent contraction of the levator prostate, which is the fiber here that is highlighted here in red. And as it contracts, it's going to impart a contracting effect on the wall of the prostate gland. And this will help to further enhance the release of the content of the prostate gland into the ejaculate. This is going to help to contract also the wall of the prostatic urethra, so that whatever it is that is released from the ejaculatory dot and also the prostate gland will be collected together and pushed down into the membranous urethra, which will finally be taken down into the pena urethra before it is finally released part of the body. So you can see that the levator prostate as an emergence from the pelvic floor is helping to contribute to the process of ejaculation through the contraction of its fibers. This is also one of the importance that the pelvic floor also presents. Then the next one is stability. The pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm is seen to work in conjunction with other neighboring muscles, which include the muscles in the back region and also the abdominal region. So this muscle will synchronize their effects together. And if you look at this image here, this is where we have the pelvic floor that is highlighted here in yellow. So during walking, coughing, or even sneezing, or any other action that will create impact around the pelvic region, you see the pelvic floor working together with the neighboring muscle to synchronize this action so as to stabilize the body during these processes. So this is also one of the functions that the pelvic floor exhibits. Then the final function is a pumping mechanism in pumping blood and also lymph to the upper part of the body. That is why it is referred to as the pelvic pump. If you look at this structure here by the side, this is where we have the pelvic floor highlighted in yellow. You can see it forming the inferior limit of the pelvic cavity. And at this region, you see it exhibiting a functioning effect in pumping during the process of contraction. And this is where it helps to pump blood or lymph to the upper part of the body. So at this region, it's acting as a functioning structure that helps to suck blood and lymph and drive it to the upper part of the body where it will be deposited or released into the heart. You can see that we have a number of importance that the pelvic floor exhibits, even beyond what we imagine. Thanks for watching. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.